Hi, I'm Judith Dreyer. Thank you for joining me for this podcast series, The Holistic Nature of Us. I invite you to journey with me into a better understanding of the concepts behind our holistic nature and how that ties us directly to the natural world around us. My intention is to be your guide for this half hour as we begin seeing our world with fresh eyes, gaining more understanding and learning how we can connect the dots in practical ways that we are nature and nature's in us. I feature a broad range of guests deeply concerned about the environmental issues of our time and more, authors and educators, practitioners and others, whose passion for this earth and for all species help us create sustainable bridges of understanding. These folks are innovators, action-oriented, creating solutions in a variety of ways that honor us and the planet's holistic nature. I am honored to share their stories, their projects, and their passions with all of you. And today, I'm delighted to introduce you to Woodrow Nelson, who is a lifelong tree planter while growing up in several Midwest states through a business career in California and Ohio before moving to Lincoln, Nebraska to join the executive management team of the nonprofit Arbor Day Foundation in 2006. He is inspired by hundreds of thousands of Arbor Day Foundation members, engaging them in the conservation work of the foundation with impact in neighborhoods, communities, and forests across the globe. Woody and his wife Joyce enjoy time together with their children and grandchildren. Welcome, Woody. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here today. I'm pleased to be with you too, Judah. Thank you. Woody's here to tell us a lot about trees. There's a relatively new program called Time for Trees, and that's how I was able to get in touch with Woody. And I'd love him to tell us not only about that program, but I'd like him to start with the value of trees in our landscape. Um, Judith, we all know that um, from a very early age that um, trees um, uh, soak up carbon dioxide and emit oxygen in return. It's, a, it's really a life's necessity. Uh, is clean air to breathe, and um, but beyond that, it's it's just become more critical than ever that um, humankind is is ability to survive and thrive is at risk right now. Uh, air and, and water pollution is rampant. Uh, temperatures are rising at alarming levels. Um, the entire globe is battling poor health for a number of different reasons, and society as a whole is is becoming more and more um, fractured. Uh, the weight of these issues is indelibly uh, altering the, the human condition, and, and scientists, healthcare professionals, environmentalists, humanitarians, and, and organizations, both public and private alike, are working feverishly to slow and, and even reverse uh, the, the damage. Um, the Arbor Day Foundation is committed to, to moving this work forward. Uh, the Arbor Day Foundation was founded in 1972, um, so for 47 years we've been inspiring people to plant, nurture, and celebrate trees, and um, uh, we firmly believe, we know that trees are an important part of the solution to, to many of those critical issues that I just uh, mentioned. Uh, they, they filter pollutants from the air and water, they protect us from dangerous heat and flooding, um, they lower urban temperatures, they save energy, um, they sequester carbon to slow the rate of climate change, resources from forests help keep people out of extreme poverty, um, green environments encourage physical activity, they improve cognitive ability, uh, they reduce stress, and, and, and trees, we know trees just bring communities together. Um, they're they're kind of unassailable, and, and even in this fractured society, we we know that trees are uh, are can be a unifier. Uh, people can agree on trees um, as a solution. So I think that that that's um, just so many compound benefits um, to to planting trees, and that's why the Arbor Day Foundation is so committed. Uh, the Time for Trees initiative that you mentioned is um, is we're going big. And uh, we're going big because we have to. And um, uh, our, the initiative aims to plant 100 million trees and inspire 5 million tree planters uh, by the summer of 20, 
2022. So we've got a few years to go. We're well on our way there. And um, it, it's it's really, really pretty exciting. Um, it sounds it, um, which is why I wanted to um, invite you here today. I don't think we can say enough about the importance of trees. And we know here, I'm in the Northeast, and we know that a couple of our trees are suffering uh, from the emerald ash borer. Um, we have the woody adelgid uh, uh, infestation here on our eastern hemlocks. Um, we we see a lot of trees destroyed for logging, uh, irresponsible logging, I might add. And we see trees destroyed because of weather conditions. We're a very compact state, so you can't really get lost in the state of Connecticut. You know, there's always a road somewhere, and we, you constantly see the utility companies out there cutting down trees. And I and I understand the reasons why they do that, but I would like to see more public awareness of what these utility companies are doing to replace and replant the trees. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I agree with you that the public awareness of what they're doing is is important. Um, I think that you know the reasons why utility companies in particular have to do it is, is largely because of safety and and also um, just being able to deliver uh, the, the the electricity that they're served to deliver. Mm -hmm. um, but that means it needs to be responsible. It needs to be you know plant plant two for every one you have to cut down. Mm -hmm. um, we have a program called Treeline USA that recognizes utility companies across the country for uh, best practices in uh, in pruning. I mean, you can often manage trees uh, in such a way that they coexist beautifully with power lines, for example. Um, and I think the same thing with forestry. Um, there, there's there's irresponsible forestry or just cutting down trees, mm -hmm. and then there's responsible forestry. And, and in New England, there are some um, wonderful uh, examples of... Um, of forest managers or, or, or property owners who know how to selectively harvest uh, several trees uh, for their benefit and they know how to um, uh, replace those with, with the right kind. Um, you mentioned um, the woolly, uh, the, the, he the hemlock uh, devastation uh, and the emerald ash borer, you know, hitting the ash trees so hard. Responsible forestry means sometimes you have to remove trees, but but you also have to replace them, um, and then sometimes you have to replace them with a, with a little bit of diversity. Um, you know, here in the Midwest, we're seeing a lot of the uh, ash trees um, being being intentionally saved um, through arborist uh, activities. Uh, but many are just it's, the expense is so great they have to come down, and we're seeing them replaced with beautiful trees like linden, um, Kentucky coffee tree. Um, oaks, maples. Um, so it's it's just a matter of getting the right trees in the right place, and and um, we're in a way we're kind of helping uh, Mother Nature just with with the with the infestations that that are being that our trees are being faced with, uh, often, often invasive infestation. Um, you know we have to help out. Mm -hmm. Tell us something, and then how does your time for trees help? Is time for trees a program? to get education and trees into the environment or do they do um, a lot of education on other levels as well uh, when communities decide to put trees up? Yeah, Time for Trees is really a comprehensive initiative uh, again to get 100 million trees planted um, across the globe and to inspire 5 million tree planters in order to make that happen and um, it's truly an initiative to get trees planted, and there's several uh, ways that we're doing that and, and several ways that we're measuring that. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost is is reforestation. Um, and and um, uh, here in America, our national forests are being devastated by fires and, and insects and disease, and um, worldwide is also the case. I mean, worldwide, um, we lost... Uh, the equivalent of forest uh, trees that, to cover a forest the size of New Zealand last year. 
and and that's just a um, we have to we have to get busy to replace those. We have to replant those. So we've got huge reforestation programs here in the United States. We work um, with National Association of State Foresters. We work with the U.S. Forest Service. Um, we work with private um, landowners in in California right now who just need help replacing the trees that were lost. And uh, we've got uh, amazing reforestation work going on in Madagascar, in Indonesia, in, in Peru. Um, and, and just it, it's really uh, important projects that are just restoring um, so many of the forests that were lost. Um, and at a community level, too, we have a, a, a program that's become um, very important for us called Community Tree Recovery. And um, when a when a community or an area is is hit by a tornado, by hurricanes, by uh, wildfires or other natural disasters, and in the wake of that disaster, um, we've got citizens, people are just are, are hurting. And while insurance may cover the buildings and gray infrastructure, you know what about the trees that were lost? So we have a program where we go into uh, a community, let's say. Um, uh, Pensacola, Florida, this year that was hit so hard by by uh, Hurricane Michael last last fall, and and giving away to residents free trees, um, just to give them some hope and some restoration, and to, to try to bring back um, some of the some of the life that was lost uh, in in the way of the the green infrastructure, uh, and that that happens in um, it, we're doing that in Texas, we're doing that in California, much like we did. Um, with Hurricane Sandy, uh, all along uh, uh, New Jersey uh, uh, coastline, that that, that program is really widely um, um, favored. People love it. I mean, people cry when when they show up and they say, "You you mean this tree is free?" And yes, it's free. It's yours. Take it. Please plant it. And they they just they're just so overjoyed. And uh, that's that's really moving. Um, and and that's the impact that we want to see. Yes, we get to count the trees towards our Time for Trees initiative. But we're also recruiting a new tree planter, somebody who's now inspired to plant a tree, and um, and more more than anything, it's just bringing hope and healing back to a community. So those are a few examples of what we're doing. Those are wonderful examples because uh, many years ago. Um, there was a community in Connecticut that was devastated by a hurricane. And the, it was a typical New England town where you had these beautiful, I believe some of them were elms and oaks and maples lining the city street, the town street. It was a small town here in New England. And it, the hurricane came in like somebody was bowling and just knocked down all the trees on this this beautiful boulevard that was the main street of town, and it created um, a feeling of such devastation. And to have your organization come in and offer trees when you're already facing the paperwork of insurance companies, uh, the loss of perhaps your pets and a part of your structure, you know, your home, um, has to be very fulfilling for you. Uh, to see that across the country. Yeah, it is. It's um, um, that's why I love coming to work every day. Yeah, I mean, we're doing, we're giving back. Um, we're we're putting all of our effort into making our world um, uh, at a neighborhood level, at a community level, at a statewide level, and a and a, a global level just just greener and healthier uh, for this and future generations. Um, sometimes it's kind of the, the the only hard part of my about this work that. Um, that I can quickly get over is that um, trees take a while to grow, mm-hmm. and um, so I'm just we're doing this work for posterity, if you will, um, so that future gener we're doing these we're planting all these trees for future generations. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's true because 25 years later, um, this community now has their street built back up, and people have trees in their neighborhood and in their yard. So you you have to be patient, as you mentioned with yep. trees. Um, obviously there's a few understory trees we could plant in the meantime that might give us a little punch or for our dollar, but um, it, it, it's still a work in progress. And I like what you said about leaving 
uh, leaving a community better after a devastation for the future generations, because that's really one of the themes of this podcast. How can we understand sustainability? And sustainability means not just leaving something for somebody, but leaving it better for somebody down the road. And I'm talking about generations down the road. I don't want my grandkids or their grandkids to have a devastated planet, you know? So yes. these kind of projects contribute to that. I just read an article today. I don't know if you know anything about it, but folks in India recently just planted millions of trees in this one district. Yes, it's 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 amazing. In India, in particular, in India, in Pakistan, um, in China, and in uh, Australia, has another huge initiative going on where uh, people people get it. Um, not enough people, unfortunately, but that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but but it's so important. And uh, again, trees are a unifier. But if if we can get this movement uh, rolling, where millions of trees and and can get planted, um, it's uh, it's it's going to make a difference. And and we have to do it. Uh, right. That's why we're, that's why we're doing it. Right. Well, I think one of the key components of trees that a lot of folks don't understand is the carbon sequestration that occurs and how they um, deflect the rain runoff uh, in, in s such a capacity that it doesn't end up in our storm drains. Right. So the two different issues, I realize that, but the storm drain issue alone is huge in cities because it captures all the garbage and who knows what else goes down the storm drain and then that ends up in our riverways, it ends up in our streams, it ends up down in the ocean. Yes. And trees mitigate that. They help uh, prevent some of that huge amount of water from being washed away. Yes. So um, I'll, I'll give you a, a little fun fact, Judith. Um, okay. These 100 million trees that were set out to plant in the next three years, um, those trees will um, uh, will will cause um, 7.1 billion cubic meters of avoided water runoff absorbed. And and just to put that in, in context, that's enough water uh, to give every person on Earth a bottle of water every day for five years. So. Wow. That trees are, are just a magnificent resource um, for water. They they um, they soak it up before the before that um, storm water runoff can can wash oil and other pollutants off into our uh, sewers and, wa and water systems. Um, you know, an, another interesting story. New York City um, back in, in uh, about 15 years ago, the city government really balked at a six billion dollar water treatment plan, and instead they decided to invest in um, easements uh, to keep and maintain beautiful uh, riparian forests up in the Delaware uh, uh, watershed up in the Catskills. And today, uh, New York City has some of the purest drinking water in the world. And um, this is because they're, they, they know that trees can do the job. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, 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 we, we try to make sure people can always understand that. Um, I didn't know that about New York City. Uh, I have read, I'm going to say maybe 10 years ago, about Bed Mittler's initiative for the city of yeah. planting 3,000 trees along one of the major waterways. Um, I don't know if that's come about, but that was certainly an ambitious project. Yeah, the New York Restoration Project is a wonderful example of a local nonprofit. Uh, we work with them, and as with many of our nonprofits across the country, to to make sure that everybody's uh, working in the same direction and the same uh, page. But it's a great organization mm. that Bette Midler has. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this. This is a very practical question. Okay. That's a lot of trees you're trying to plant, 100 million trees. Yes. Where do you get them? Great question. Um, well, as we work with, um, the, let's say, the U.S. Forest Service, for example, mm -hmm. um, they have nurseries set up on Forest Service lands uh, across the country. They collect seeds from pine cones. Uh, those seeds are germinated and they're grown in nurseries. And um, um, then when the time comes, say about usually like 18 months later, the trees are, are big enough and hardy enough where they're ready to get transplanted back. 
and planting crews are uh, gather up all those trees or, or or take the shipment of tree truckload of those trees and climb the mountainside to, to get them planted. Uh, uh, same uh, same is true with state uh, forest. Um, uh, they often have their own state uh, nursery where those trees are grown. Um, and then I mentioned Madagascar. This is a, a, a wonderful story where um, there's a, there's a local um, there's an organization called the Madagascar Biodiversity Project, and they have 21 nurseries, uh, tree nurseries, where they uh, collect seeds, um, they grow them, and then they employ um, impoverished uh, Malagasy citizens. Um, they get they pay them. They they get a wonderful working wage, wage so they can afford to send their children to school. Um, but they've planted in the last. Uh, seven years since since 2002, um, we've helped them plant 2.6 million trees to to restore deforestation and and provide habitat for endangered wildlife while employing uh, impoverished uh, people. So it, it's just um, again, where do the trees come from? They're they're grown from native seed uh, in a tree nursery, and that's. That's the trees that we're getting planted in forests. Can, can private citizens contribute to that too? Um, in terms of uh, uh, donations or funding, or Don't, uh, in terms of uh, growing some trees for the forestry services. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. I have not heard of that actually. I know that there are uh, foresters, uh, private foresters, who do grow uh, seed, have nurseries where they grow seed stock. Uh, for replanting in their own area, but I don't know if they're. I have not heard of people donating tr- seedlings to the U.S. Forest Service. Hmm. Well, I'll have to look into that into my neck of the woods um, and see what's going on there, uh, mm-hmm. because that's a lot of trees, Woody. <laughs> a lot of trees. It, it's not enough, though. Um, we uh, we set our sight on a hundred million because um, we think we 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 we're pretty confident that we can accomplish that mm-hmm. in uh, in three years time um, I mean, we're already a third of the way there Judith um, wow I'm, I'm, so I'm so excited that we we seem to be having some help uh, this time for trees initiative is is um, well it got your attention I'm so happy for that and um, it's getting the attention of um, some fortune 500 companies that are that are really stepping up and and doing their part. Um, some of those companies, you know, are, are volunteering voluntarily um, offsetting their carbon footprint uh, through trees. They're they're giving enough of a donation where uh, we can plant enough trees that will will create a carbon offset for them. Mm-hmm. And that that's really exciting too. When when co- uh, corporations voluntarily uh, want to do that, there's no law that says they have to. There's no carbon tax. There's no price of carbon, but. Right. But they, they, they're just doing it because it's the right thing to do. Right. And, you know, on that level, I had a chance to be a part of developing um, the superintendent of schools building in a town in Virginia. And it was, I don't know how many acres, I want to say 10 to 20 acres of land. It was a square brick building set off the land. And we were asked as master gardeners and master naturalists for wildlife to plan out the grounds of this building and they divided us up into five groups and we each had a section to sort of plan out and we without talking to each other we all created a walking trail that would have health and fitness markers as well as wildlife markers around this building not to mention the trees and the plants etc and the difficulty was is that there was no funds for the town to do this and I thought that I was it was such an exciting project to be a part of but there were no funds for them to see it through at that time so I would love to see corporations not only give money towards these projects but to look at their space and to re landscape their space so that it's more diverse. Yep, I, I agree, and and many do. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that that especially school districts uh, seem like they're forever not having uh, enough funding to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but but corporate, there are many corporations who do take great pride in their campus and um, and and really want to make sure that they're 
planting trees for 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 water and for uh, air air quality and for um, saving energy because of the shading effect, but also um, just the the, re- the restorative value that it has on people. Um, you know, reducing stress or or uh, providing healing or improving cognitive ability, improving memory. It, they're just so ther- uh, green spaces. Uh, not just trees, but green spaces, uh, the walking trail you mentioned, <clears throat> shrubs, flowers, um, in combination with trees, it's, just, it's so therapeutic and, and so, um, I mean, it just builds for a, for a human well-being. Mm-hmm. And, um, that, I think a lot of companies are getting behind that, just knowing the value of what it takes to, to have a, uh, a person um, you know, restored over the lunch hour because they're getting to eat their lunch out at a picnic table in the shade. Uh, they've got a better uh, um, productivity the rest of the day than somebody who's cooped up. Right, and if we look at our our bottom line, that always is an incentive. So more productivity, happier people produce better, the creative juices flow. It's a win-win for everyone in that situation. Um, So I think those are good points. Woody, do you have three tips that we can give our listeners today that they can apply, very practical tips that they can apply in their daily life? Very practical tips. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to give a, a, an easy one, um, I think, and that is, um, uh, water is a precious, uh, commodity. It's a precious resource. Water, um, is a, uh, um, it's a necessity of life. Um, it's something we depend on every day. Uh, we can't make up something else, create something else to take its place. But we can plant trees, and um, I think just for the sake of water alone, if you can if you can find a place to plant a tree, uh, do it. it it's um, and there's always room for another tree. If you, if you go to a local nursery and and find a, a, a red bud or a, or a Japanese maple, there's always room for another tree, even if it's a, a small understory um, um, uh, ornamental. They, they do just as much good. I think the second tip would be um, encourage your community to get behind the trees. Um, we have a program called Tree City USA, which has been going on for 45 years, where I, you, you probably have driven through it, driven up to a town where that Tree City USA sign is out there welcoming visitors to their town. Um, that, that's intentional. They, that, that community has a, has a tree board or a tree ordinance, or they've got a They've got an advocate on, in the, within city government um, who is um, advocating for uh, to make sure that they've got funding for their community forest, and that's so important. And if you are in a tree city USA, be proud of it and and acknowledge uh, your city council person that, that that's a wonderful thing. And if you're if you not a tree city USA, um, I would encourage you to um, get a hold of a council person or get a hold of the the, the local. Um, uh, uh, Parks and Rec director, or whoever it might be, and say, "Hey, how come how come Bedford over there is doing it, and we're not? This is silly." Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, that number two is encourage urban forestry management. Eric, um, thank you. That's a good one. And then uh, finally, I guess the third one would be um, um, help spread the word. Help spread the word. Help 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 this movement work. Um, uh, if you'd like, Judith, I can give you some online um, resources where people can go to, so that they can be equipped to um, to help spread the word. I, I, so that 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 in itself is just a huge uh, benefit to the world, and hopefully doesn't take a lot of effort. I, I would love you to do that. Can you give us a couple of those resources now? We we also do a transcript for every podcast, so that information will be listed there and on my website. Um, okay. But if you could give us some heads up today, that would be wonderful. Very simply, um, one we- one website is arborday.org, um, and that is the Arbor Day Foundation's website. Um, there you're going to find ev- uh, just – all kinds of information on the best ways to plant trees, the best way to care for trees. Um, you can learn how to join and become a member of the Arbor Day Foundation. Um, and for fifteen dollars, we'll send you ten free trees. Well, you can you can buy trees from our online nursery. 
uh, and then just all kinds of great ed educational material too, for every from ordinary lay people um, to uh, the, the the even to master gardeners, um, and especially we've got great information for um, city management uh, professionals. Uh, the other website is timefortrees.org, and uh, timefortrees.org lays out some of the details of um, uh, what we're doing, um, how we're. Uh, restoring forests, we're, we're building vibrant communities, and we're recruiting tree planters um, in, in, in our uh, effort to accomplish our goals. And uh, there's a, a lot of good information there. There's a toolkit where um, you can uh, find some, a get access to some interesting facts, and, and, um, and there's a great way to donate. There's a great way to give us uh, an email address, and we'll keep you informed. But um, again, arborday.org timefortrees.org. Mm, that is wonderful. I know that's how I found you, and I'm, I'm so grateful for our discussion today. Um, I, I, as I said in the beginning, I don't think we can say enough about the value of trees in our landscape, and you've really highlighted some really important key points. And it's heartening to know that there's a lot of folks out there who are planting trees today. Well, there are. Uh, Judith, it's been a pleasure to share, and um, I'm, I'm so pleased to to meet you. Uh, I feel like a, a who are who is a kindred spirit in uh, making our world uh, greener and healthier. Mm. Well, thank you, Woody. Um, I appreciate that. So I want to thank everyone for joining us at the Holistic Nature of Us, and I hope you do feel as inspired by by Woody's uh, talk, his tips. Um, and the information he shared with us today, I know I certainly do, and I'm grateful. This is Judith Dreyer. I am the author of At the Garden's Gate book and blog. My book is available through my website, which is www.judithdreyer.com, as well as several distribution arms, such as Amazon, Nook, Goodreads, and more. And again, I'd like to remind all of you that a transcript is available for each podcast. Please like and share them. Let's support each other and get the word out. And remember, now is the time for practical action and profound interchange so we value our world again. Enjoy your day.